Greer Industries, taking environmental protection to the extreme and raising the bar in supporting our natural resources. To help ensure the protection of Hellhole and Schoolhouse Cave, Greer relies on the expertise of Extreme Endeavors, who designed, installed, and continuously monitors one of the world's most sensitive microclimate monitoring systems known. This video is a summary of the yearly activities and formal results of the microclimate research. It serves as a status report for U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the West Virginia Department of Natural Resources, and the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection. The CAVE Microclimate Monitoring System has provided years of exceptional scientific data and is a fully automated system for environmental reporting to state and federal agencies. As with any large or complex assembly with components located miles apart, the CAVE Monitoring System can have breakdowns, especially when working in such a harsh environment as Hellhole. Last year, the cables that connect the sensors inside Hellhole to the sensors on the surface failed. In June of 2014, 10 people, 7 underground and 3 on the surface, replaced the thousands of feet of cable. Months of planning were vital to the success of this endeavor. After the cable replacement, automated cave monitoring resumed for Hellhole using the EMS software. Another change to the system included power reliability enhancement at Hellhole. The communications electronics on the tower was placed on its own solar power system. Hellhole, with its rugged, dramatic entrance, is located to the west of Greer Lime's operations. Hellhole has a sensor on the surface known as Mod 2-1. Inside the cave are three sensors, Mod 2-2, which monitors a key hibernation site in a passage going back to the shiproom, Mod 2-3 that monitors the corkscrew passage, which is the main link to the southern extension. Then Mod 2-4, the furthest back at the lower sodalist site, monitoring the hibernation site of the Indiana bats. To monitor the integrity of the cave and ensure the bat habitat remains unchanged, data is downloaded daily from the sensors and analyzed weekly for anomalies by the EMS software. Extreme Endeavors, working with regulating agencies, defined these abnormal conditions and referred to them as flags in reporting. The recorded data for this year shows normal temperatures until February of 2015. Data analysis performed by EMS reported excessively cold temperature flags for Mod 2.2. Further analysis revealed that these excessively cold temperatures inside the cave are correlated to below average macroclimate temperatures. Behind Mod 2.3 sensor is the largest extent of the cave, known as the Southern Extension. This area generates considerable airflow, resulting in much more dramatic and rapid changes to the microclimate due to air exchange to equalize pressure in such a large volume. Mod 2.4 is the deepest and hardest sensor to access. Because it is the last sensor in the chain, it is prone to lightning strikes. This is a passage that leads to a smaller volume of the cave, which creates less airflow than the other locations. An important factor in determining the integrity of a cave is to monitor the microclimate change over time. To simplify the transfer temperature, we graph the monthly changes and compare them from year to year. Normal seasonal changes should result in similar patterns for each year. The microclimate averages should correlate with the macroclimate changes. Looking at the average monthly temperatures inside Hellhole, we see some of the lowest temperatures to date for Mods 2.2 and 2.3, which is to be expected based on the macroclimate. Mod 2.4 was less affected by the macroclimate influence.
Schoolhouse Cave entrance is owned by the West Virginia Department of Natural Resources. Just outside the entrance is a surface sensor called Mod 1-1 to record the macroclimate. Located 600 feet inside Schoolhouse Cave is where the Virginia Big-Eared Bats hibernate, and it is the location of Mod 1-2 microclimate sensor. The sensor resides in a narrow passage with a large volume of cave behind it, resulting in substantial airflow and creating dramatic changes in temperature. The recorded temperatures in Schoolhouse Cave show cyclical variations over the past nine years of data collection, detailing the cave's reactions to the different seasons. Focusing on the data for the reporting period, we notice larger temperature shifts during the winter months than in previous years, which is expected. There were several days of high temperature changes in a single day, but all were attributed to normally occurring weather events and the macroclimate influencing the microclimate. This year, Greer Lime was mining through the Wildcat Hollow, a fracture zone. Although it was shown in mapping the cave that the fracture zone is not connected to the cave, we increased our vigilance in monitoring the sensors in Schoolhouse. During this observation, we found a pressure anomaly of only a few hundredths of PSI, yet we investigated it due to the proximity to Wildcat Hollow. Extreme Endeavors looked for any mining activities that could have produced this pressure anomaly, but the mine had no activity at this time, and the anomaly was dismissed as a natural occurrence. Looking at the average monthly temperatures inside Schoolhouse Cave, we see a considerable drop over the last couple of years. This is due to the change in the location of the sensing element and the fact that the macroclimate average temperature has dropped. Data collection and scientific analysis show that the integrity of the caves has not been compromised by any activities by Greer Industries. The bat habitat remains ideal to facilitate population rebounds from the devastation of white nose syndrome. If you have any questions or comments concerning this research, please contact Extreme Endeavors. We strive to provide fact-based environmental analysis and accountability, pushing the boundaries of innovation. <laughs>